We can all understand the connection between diet and physical health. But what about the connection between diet and mental health? Does that have a connection and what are the impacts of diet on mental health? What's up guys, welcome to another week's episode of Get Sight where we create videos and content to break down some really concept thinking patterns and principles in psychology and condense them into digestible chunks for you. And like I said, this week we're going to be taking a look at the connection between diet and mental health. So in order to stay with the theme of psychology and to back these videos up in some empirical literature, why don't we look at some of the studies that have sought to look at the connection between diet and mental health. Well, in 2014, there was a pretty large scale systematic review conducted that established that eating better had connotations and positive implications for an overall sense of well-being. It basically found that if your diet is improved, if you eat more fruit, more vegetables, if you drink more water, your sense of well-being and positive mental health actually improves. A recent study in psychology also found that adopting a Mediterranean style diet, which are things like olive oil and vegetables, has a positive implication for reducing the symptoms of depression. What's more is that after the study and after the experiment was finished, there were still long-term results, positive implications for those that took part six months after the trial actually finished. So from this study, we can start to understand that improvements in diet and eating better not only have short-term implications for improved mental health, but they can also have longer-term implications. Yes, in this study, it was only six months, but other studies are coming to light that shows even years after such interventions, if the diet continues and we improve and we continue the improvements in our diet, then mental health, positive mental health ramifications can sustain over the longer term. And in 2014, there was another systematic review that looked at the connection between poor diet and mental health. Foods that were high in saturated fat, processed meat, and high in sugar had connotations towards increases in depression and anxiety amongst children and adolescents. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, it's pretty obvious if we were to think about the connection between diet and physical health. And you don't need me to tell you about the connection between poor diet and obesity. But there is a plentiful amount of psychological evidence to suggest that there is a connection between mental illness and poor mental health and obesity. In 2010, a systematic review found such a correlation. People that were obese were 55% more likely to be diagnosed with depression. And people with depression were 58% more likely to actually be obese. So from these studies, we can start to gain a bit of a correlation not only between the connection between diet and mental health, but also the ramifications of a poor diet and those correlations to mental health. It's clear then that adopting a more positive diet, one that's better in vegetables, fruit, less processed meat, less saturated fat and less sugar, will have positive ramifications for diagnoses such as anxiety and depression. However, this of course is not the full picture. Mental health complications come from a number of different factors and can be extremely complex. Things such as little exercise, poverty, and growing up in deprived areas, for example. However, there's also something to be said about the, the factors I've just spoken about there and poor diet. So yes, there are definitely other complications, other situations that lead to the complexities of mental health issues and the diagnosis of mental illnesses. But often some of those factors also have connections to poor diet. Those that exercise less, those that live in poverty, those that live in deprived area, areas, sit again those that exercise less, those that live in poverty, those that live in deprived areas are more likely to have poorer diets. Now normally in Get Psych, I go through a couple of tips that you can adopt when we're talking about a certain topic in psychology and I'm going to do that in a minute as well. But when we think about the complexities of mental health and we think about the, the connection between that and poor diet, it's important to think about legislation and policy procedures. Things such as the price of fruit and vegetables, you know I was saying there about the connection between poverty and living in deprived areas and that connection between poor diet and then the connection between poor mental health. One of the challenges for people in those situations is that fruit and vegetables are actually more expensive than junk food and easy to access processed food. So there's something to be here to say about a legislative and policy procedure that needs to be implemented on a governmental scale. Things like this are never just as easy as saying, oh, just improve your diet or just buy more fruit, just buy more vegetables. We have to be empathic, we have to see the full picture, and we have to know that things are not that simple. You or I, or some, anybody watching this video, it might seem like that's a pretty simple step. You just improve your diet and you're gonna see improvements in mental health. And although that is true, the challenges and the barriers for some are much more complex. 
So like I said, we're gonna go through some top tips that you can adopt to improve your diet and hopefully see improvements in mental health. So what are some of the things that you can do? Well, one of my top tips is to eat regularly. Now this might sound like a little bit counterintuitive, but it's actually a really important step to take to improve your diet. When your blood sugars drop, you can become irritable and tired and down. And what happens a lot of the time is that people think that they're gonna improve their diet by eating less regularly. So for example, they might have a little bit of breakfast, they won't have any lunch, they won't have any snacks, and then they'll have a massive dinner. And the truth is they overcompensate too much during eating that big dinner because they missed all those meals. Also throughout the day, because they haven't been eating, their irritability and their sense of feeling down actually increases. So one of the key things to do here is to eat regularly, but to eat smaller portions more regularly. As you're doing this, you can choose foods that release energy slowly. Things such as nuts, seeds, and whole wheat and whole foods. Another key thing to think about here is to not skip breakfast. More often than not, sometimes people that want to go on diets or want to see improvements in their mental health because of their eating patterns will maybe skip breakfast altogether and just wait till lunch. Now, like I said, that's going to be counterintuitive. Another thing to think about here is to avoid foods that spike your blood sugars too rapidly. Things high in refined sugar, for example. Okay, my next key tip when we're thinking about what you can do to improve your diet and see the improvements in your mental health is to stay hydrated. And if you don't do this, you can often have implications for concentration and even things like mood swings, for example. Don't get me wrong, staying hydrated is one of those really challenging things. It's easy to go through almost a full day without feeling like you've drank anything. It's much harder to do that when you're trying to reduce food intake. But you should be aiming for six to eight glasses of water a day. Another key thing to think about here is actually about your metabolism. Now, this is not necessarily connected to diet and mental health, but it is a, a kind of side benefit to hydration, that if you're just a small percentage dehydrated, it can actually have huge implications for your metabolism and your ability to burn fat. So staying hydrated is always really important and positive. The next thing to think about here is to watch your fiber intake. How healthy your gut is can have a direct implication on your overall sense of well-being, including your mental health. Make sure to eat whole grains, vegetables, and fruit in this example. Okay, my next key point is to watch your caffeine intake. Becoming dependent on caffeine has actually shown to have direct correlations to developments in anxiety disorders. Caffeine, like any other drug, can have implications, negative implications, when you try and come off it. So try not to get yourself in that cycle of taking too much caffeine in each day. And if you are on high levels of caffeine throughout the day, try and reduce it steadily. If you're taking seven or eight cups of coffee a day, which I've had days like that, it's important not to just go cold turkey. That's not going to make you feel very good. Try and reduce, you know, to six, five, four, and then reduce your caffeine intake that way. Another key point here is to be consuming omega-3 fish oils. Studies have shown that high diets in omega-3 or even omega-3 supplements can help in the balancing of mood swings. So when we're thinking about the connection between diet and mental health, you want to think a little bit about some of the micronutrients and the vitamins that you're taking in and how that can benefit your mental health. And omega-3 is one of those things. Another thing to perhaps think about, and it's not going to affect everybody, but when I was doing a little bit of research for this video, I found some studies that had a connection between the consumption of grapefruit juice and grapefruits in general and the absorption of antidepressant medication. Studies have shown a connection, some studies have shown a connection between some of the vitamins in grapefruit juice and the ability of the body to absorb antidepressant medication. So if you're on antidepressants, it's maybe something to think about that you could take some grapefruit juice, a, a glass a day or something like that, and hopefully that will help with your overall sense of well-being after being on that medication. Okay guys, hopefully you understand a little bit more about the connection between a good diet and mental health and a bad diet and mental illness. Throughout this video, we've been looking at some of the key studies in psychology that help us make that 